Vanadil, a land of danger, mystery, and adventure. I longed to travel through this realm, but couldn't because I was a broke scrub with a paper route back in 2004. But those days are long behind me. I'm a man now, or at least a boy the size of a man. And I have my own money, and a lot of, a lot of free time. Right, so let's get straight to it. Choices are hard, so I'm rolling both my race and my starting class. The first roll was for an Elvon, which is a pretty decent race. I mean, I'm not a huge furry, and I'm not going directly to jail. So that's pretty neat. Though it does have a few drawbacks. Elvon, despite their pretensions, are not the cleverest ducks of the pond. Most of these jobs are acceptable. Uh, there's two I'm pretty happy about, three I'd be okay with, and one I'm dreading. Can you guess which one it is? Resigned to fate, with my d6 in hand, I rolled the dice and looked down and go, Ah, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, so I'm an Elvon Black Mage. Wicked. For the uninitiated, an Elvon Black Mage is something that you might politely refer to as a off-meta choice. In fact, it's the only race class combination that I know of that has its own specific guide, which may be helpful in the future, so let's open it up and read some of the opening paragraphs. Oh. Oh. I'm retarded? Determined to make the most of this interesting situation, I, Kernan Demang, step forth in Sandoria. Walking through the port, I come across two noblemen who are having a dick-waving competition and feel the need to drag me into it. I actually don't really know what they're saying. I couldn't really read the story over all the constant trade chat screaming. Look at Who's yourself! Look at yourself! Come on! Come on. Come on. Does self. anybody come think on. this encourages gold selling? Ah, the glories of retail. After getting lost in Sandori, I find my way to the city gates. I was a broke elf, a noob, a scrub, and there was only one way to kick off my adventuring right. The battle plan was simple. I would head into the wilderness, find rabbits, and beat the bejesus out of them with my stick. And if I was feeling extra spicy, pelt them with rocks. Here's some of that exciting gameplay right now. If you have played 11 before, you may be wondering why I'm not playing the music or the sound effects in these particular video clips. Well, the answer is pretty clear, once I show you. Some events going on, turning the night into a never-ending loop of these fireworks sounds, which as you can tell, is really, really soon. Fun fact, it turns out I picked possibly the worst time to come for this playthrough, because this event is going on until the end of August. At least the fireworks stopped during the day, but wait, I'm not in a good town. I'm in Sandoria. Look, don't get too upset with me, okay? I know for a fact that there's a lot of people who hold the city in a special place in their hearts, bagpipes included. I'm just not one of them. Because I picked a good city on my main. I picked Bastop. Mm, mm, so good. So good. So good. Right, back to Curtin. A couple of minutes and a dozen of rabbits later, I dinged five. I even got so good at hitting things with my stick, that I learned how to hit things with my stick even harder. With my job done, I turned back over to Sandy and stepped back through the gates. My mind expanded. I started physically shaking. As my vision blurred, I was taken to a different place that I've never seen or have any context for. A lady appeared. A fine lady. Who I have no idea who she is or what she wants, but apparently she logged into the game for the first time and she's got somewhere to go. I have no idea what's happening, but I'm sure it's not very important and I'll never have to deal with it in the long run. Once that strange episode was over and I was back in town, I had a few stops to hit up. I heard that there was a dude in South Sandy that would take rabbit pelts and trade them for money. He took them off my hands for a cool 120 gil and said he'd take more if I had them. Sick. While wandering around town like an idiot, I came across some lady whose name made me want to cross my legs. I hit up the auction house and I put up for sale all the rocks that I got from smacking rabbits in the head. Wait, what? Taxes? Even in my video games, the IRS haunts me. 
I bump into this strange fellow in green clothes who told me about a brand new source of magic. Being a guy who can only throw rocks, more spells seemed like it would be a pretty big asset. Apparently I need to meet some hero of renown and bug the shit out of him. I find him over near the city gates and present the trust pass to him. X and... X. This guy. This guy says that I'm a bit of a scrub, but he'll give it a shot. Together we summon something more unnerving than walking in on your parents doing it. A perfect clone materializes from the ether. X gonna give it to you doesn't seem nearly as disturbed by this as I am. In fact, both he and the clone seem to be getting along quite swimmingly. The two of them talk about the Elvon's favorite pastime outside of being smug, which is genociding the orcs. The clone gets dismissed, or may maybe it was the original, I don't know which one to shoot. Either way, we're here now. Talking to this guard, he tells me all the ways I can help out the realm and be less of a loser. I try my best to keep my eyes from rolling out of my head. He then challenges my honor and says that I can't even kill some simple orcs. And I'm not going to take that from a doorman. Plus, I thought it would be a cool way to trust, try out the trust magic. I just, you know, just, it just kind of lined up. It's, it's not because he called me out. I promise. Back in Ronfar, I rush to summon the X-Men and I'm hit with a startling realization that the Elbon spell animation is a little goofy. My heart sank as I stared into the empty-headed creature in front of me. His vacuous thousand mile stare was the only response I got to any question. Which means I'm the brains of the party. Which also means we're screwed. On the plus side though, my new friend hits like a bloody train. Which certainly makes my life a whole lot easier. Damn! X and I smash the hell out of this rabbit and a chest appears. What the hell, I thought to myself. As I looked at the lock, curious to know what's inside the box, I cracked it open. And it's... It's just trash. It's just... It's just... It's a little... I opened a trash can. I'm never... I'm never touching these again. Not ever, not once. My smooth-brained friend must be pretty afraid of stealing claims, or secretly resents me for summoning him into this dark, dark, cruel world because he just lets people wail on me until I poke them with my stick. Like I'm throwing rocks, bud. Like I obviously want them dead. Come on. Deeper into the woods, we spot our first target. I was tasked with retrieving an orcish axe to prove my mettle, and by golly, I was gonna get it. Though I would be lying if I said that I wasn't a little conflicted. Despite our difference in appearance, what gave me the right to take the lives of these people? Then I kind of remember that I need to slaughter these guys for clout, and uh, I stop caring anymore. Eat some rocks, heathens. Half an hour and a gaggle of orcs later, I find my first new spell in the wilderness. Bind. Bind is a root that keeps somebody locked in place and breaks when they're damaged. Here, let me demonstrate. Magic skills, bro. I don't have them. Slowly losing my mind, I widow a ton more orc ladies. Finally, after some more grinding, the axe is mine. <laughs> no, it's a good thing I'm not allowed to equip that. I can't afford to lose more brain cells. Turning the axe in, we run into this weird fellow. After that, I roam around town looking for some new gear. Some guy drafts me into being his delivery boy. It's not too out of the way, and to be honest, I was a little paranoid that it would take up space in my inventory. I drop off the receipt and get told to stay outside because I look like shit. Hey, I don't blame him. I wouldn't let me in nice places either. I pick up some new spells from the magic store, but there's no footage of that because I didn't want to show just how lost I got in Lesser Bastok. And why did I mention it? I pick up my second mission from Guard. Apparently there's been reports of grave robbing. These dire thefts can't stand, and it's an affront to Sandoria's prestige. Which is why they sent a man who's been in the woods for seven in-game days and likely smells like crap. I think they're just trying to get rid of me, to be honest. I don't, I don't know. Call me paranoid. Whatever. Moving on. I pick up the map for the tomb here and head off for the tomb. I also use this time to test out my newer, shorter stick. It's not about the size, ladies and gentlemen. It's about how you use it. Despite not looking like a staff, I'm able to stave in the heads of most of my foes. It takes me an 
undisclosed amount of time to realize I should probably send Exum Meal to the Shadow Realm to level up my clubbing skills. As he kills them before I can get any skill ups. Bumping and grinding, I get my new weapon skill and it's back on track to the dungeon. To be honest, the tomb is not the most exciting dungeon in the world. It's not gonna blow your socks off. It's not gonna make any top 10 lists, but it's fine. It's a series of caves and a maze which I definitely didn't get lost in. Slowly losing my mind, I stumble on this huge gravestone. I'll save you the trouble of finding it. It's, it's here. It's here, look. While investigating, I hear some footsteps approaching. Luckily, because of this, I decide that hiding behind this gravestone is likely the best course of action. Oh fuck, did he read my name? You may think we're done here, but you'd be wrong. Now it's time to get some good old bat smashing. The quest item I need to turn in is dropped by ding bats. Not these bats, not these goblins, just ding bats. And I won't lie, I was getting a little nervous because they only spawn at night. There's plenty of time, but not a lot of time. I've always been a little nervous about time-related pressure, especially because it takes an earth hour to go through a whole Vandadeel day and I didn't really feel like sitting around for 45 minutes waiting for fucking bats. So like a con man on the run, I'm hustling. This wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't constantly checking my inventory, utterly paranoid that I wouldn't have enough space for the drop when it finally came. I leveled up a few times and a few skill ups and the quest item was mine. I beelined it for the exit and immediately then hit a wall. Quite a few walls, actually. Maybe because I was playing for an unhealthy amount of time or I was doing some 4D level role playing, but I got completely turned around in this too. A dark cloud of worry went over my head. Am I going to spend the rest of my life here? Doomed to wander these halls and catacombs until my dying days? I'm going to fucking die here. Die here. And that's when I had my Jimmy Neutron brain blast moment. I could just die here. Who needs a warp scroll when you get suicide by mob? Okay, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Just, just hit me. Just hit me. Hit me, please. Come on. Come on. I need to, I need to, I need to do more stuff. So I died, but I got over it, headed into the quest, and told him about the weird guy I met. Gatecard didn't seem all that interested, and instead handed me my next mission. I was to go to the cathedral and talk to a priest. Once at the priest, he explained to me that a child was missing, and it was likely the hand of some oryx. Bored and kind of directionless, I decided to go to Gaselba Outpost. These green orc bastards are gonna pay for stealing our kids. What's up there? They, they don't really seem to care that I'm in their base killing their dudes. I get to the hut and a strange sense of foreboding comes at me. I heal up and smell an ambush. Get ambushed and go. It's okay though, because we got Examil, and he's a cool guy who don't afraid of anything. I'll just start my trusted. Oh shit. Like it or not, there's only one way out of here. Well, two ways out of here, but they start the same anyway. I initiate the combat against the orcs, and. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really now? That's. that's what you got, eh? <laughs> After killing the orc and feeling pretty high on myself, a bunch of that orc nobleman I met earlier in the day came by and totally stole my glory. Like a real cool guy. Which I definitely won't remember. Whatever, to hell with him. I tell the gate guard I did my thing, he gets impressed and says I'm a pretty cool guy. Which, I mean, I already knew that. And I head to the cathedral to tell the father that, uh, Everything's good. Everything's fine. He seems pretty happy about it, but I have a sneaking suspicion that somebody isn't. After a long week of adventuring, I step out into the city, decide to take a rest. I'll tell you more about my travels next time. Thank you for watching.